my name is Jeremy. Uh, I am a senior consultant here at InfoStrat. Uh, I have about seven years of experience with Dynamics 365. Uh, we're a little bit over seven years now, actually. Uh, I started in uh, way back in version 4.0 before all of the fun uh, began. Um, today, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, the unified interface uh, and and how it is being deprecated here on, or sorry, the legacy interface is being deprecated on December 1st of 2020. So that's what we're here to discuss and kind of what our pathways are to updating uh, and getting ready for the uh, this, this legacy web client being no longer available. So quick quote here, those who expect moments of change to be comfortable and free of conflict have not learned their history. So that, one, that quote's just saying that while uh, the move to unified interface is fairly straightforward, uh, there are some things that you have to make, make sure that you're aware of uh, and other impacts that can, uh, can happen in your system. So I'll go over some of those today with us. Okay, so what is the unified interface? Uh, the unified interface uh, was uh, developed to ensure uh, consistent experiences across mo mo uh, multiple devices. So I'm not sure if people are, are aware or if they have seen the different uh, interfaces uh, throughout Microsoft's history, uh, but it used to be the mobile was different from the tablet, which was different from your computer. So the unified interface allows for a more streamlined interface for this. So it's gonna basically make the end user experience from mobile or tablet or computer, all being relatively the same. Uh, the other aspect of it is that we're gonna deploy once uh, or design once and deploy everywhere. So what that means is once you set up your forms, your fields, um, your you know end user experience, uh, once uh, it, it is that, that same experience through the mobile, the tablet or, or your computer. So we basically make one, one app to, to rule them all, so to speak. Uh, with the unified interface, we also get some more uh, additional custom controls uh, for your field, so you can get better data visualizations for, for your data. So we get some dials, some switches, and some sliders, and I will go into those uh, as part of the demonstration that I get to here in a second. <clears throat> So why are we moving away from the legacy web client? Um, Microsoft made that decision to uh, modernize and, and you know, build their fundamental design points. Again, this is really going back to uh, how are we going, how are they going to ensure that you know, whether you're using a mobile device or a, a tablet or a computer, that you have a very consistent experience with the application. Um, Additionally, it also reduces complexity, costs, and time delays, because before, as I had uh, stated previously, uh, if you had to design for the mobile app, then you had to design for the, the tablet, and then you had to design for the computer. So there was always two or three you know, additional things you had to think about uh, as, as part of your uh, implementation, whereas now uh, it, it's fairly straightforward and, and more unified. Uh, so what's different? Uh, the look and feel is different. Um, for those of you that have uh, have as much experience with CRM as I do, going back to 4.0, uh, our navigation bar is on the left again. So the navigation has changed. Some of your uh, ribbons uh, and how they interact have changed. Um, the form design, I, I like the, actually how the form is more uh, concatenated than it's uh, than it's ever been. So it's uh, we take you do have better use of the, the, the tabs and where they're located and, and screen space in general. So we also have a new timeline control. There's some different custom controls that come along with that um, and a responsive design. So those of you that have uh, different uh, screen resolutions uh, will be able to uh, not see everything kind of scrunched together as it used to be as you would change or you know make your screen resolution bigger or smaller. Uh, uh, the prior CRM or your legacy app would just kind of scrunch everything together. The, uh, the, new, the new interface does kind of a, a more responsive experience for you and I'll show you that as well here. <clears throat> Uh, additionally, the, the modularity as we've already gone through, um, and then the performance. So the the browser we use more of the browser storage, so caching becomes a uh, a big concern, uh, and we utilize that, or Microsoft utilizes that, so that uh, this the system is a lot faster than it's ever been. Uh, again, for those of you that are familiar with the system, uh, familiar with CRM. The phone client used to be extremely fast, but just kind of slow on updating. Now everything is very, very synchronized. So the metadata has been uh, synchronized in a more efficient manner. 
So where do we begin? Uh, there's generally first two, uh, the two options that uh, that we're going to discuss today um, is kind of like your, you know, option one, a very super quick test. Like, so let's see what unified interface is going to look like. Um, and what you do from there is you know, go into like a dev and UAT environment. And then we basically just temporarily turn uni uh, use unified interface only to on. Uh, and then you can kind of look at it uh, and do kind of a side by side uh, check and see, okay, so here's what it used to look like. Here's what it looks like uh, with the new unified interface. So we'll go over that aspect. Um, this this isn't a recommended approach, option one. It's just for you and your design team or your, your administrator team to kind of take a look at it uh, and start to understand what it is that your system is going to look like as we go through your, uh, into the unified interface so that you can make better design decisions as you're going to, through this implementation. Uh, the second option, which is probably my preferred option is we create a parallel test app. Um, doing that uh, allows us to, you know, look at your app module from uh, the default sitemap and then quickly and check, uh, you know, and identify some issues and gaps between your uh, legacy app where it is today and what it's going to become as part of the unified interface. Um, additionally, it allows you to review and follow up. So we're going to collect some feedback um, and, prior to, uh, and you know, collect your prior, prioritized list of issues. So as you're going through and you, uh, you see how the forms have changed and how you might need to do some form redesign uh, or if there are um, any kind of JavaScript or plugins that are in your system that might be affected. Um, and, and the biggest uh, thing that's here is the dialogues are going to be no longer supported. So if you ever had any kind of parts of your system that use dialogues where it would, you know, walk your customers or your, sorry, your end users through a, uh, a series of questions so that it could make some decisions. Those dialogue options are no longer available in Unified Interface. Um, and later this year, they're gonna be completely replaced with uh, uh, enhancements to the business process flow. So something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna go right into the demo uh, and kind of show you how this, uh, how this all works together. So let me jump into CRM. So here we are into CRM, and you can see I have an app set up, and it looks fairly familiar to your legacy app right now, right? Where you have everything across the top, um, and your different uh, your different areas uh, across the top. So here's your settings area, here's your sales area, uh, service marketing, etc. Additionally, uh, you'll you'll kind of be very, very familiar with this. So what it looks like in the new system, so what the new unified interface will be is if I click on here, this is what the same same area looks like. So I'm still in my, my demo. And now we have everything off to the side. So now we're looking at your uh, your sitemap being you know on the on the left hand side. Again, everything is still here. There's your my work, your customers, your sales, your collateral, etc. And then here are your different areas that are in here. So your sales, you have your sales insight, uh, app settings, etc. So that looks pretty much the same as this, just a little bit different. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice uh, is the, the the bar across the top has a couple different options. So we had your global search here, and then you had your uh, recently viewed items, uh, quick create. Some of that has changed. So now we still have your global search. Uh, we have what's called task flows. These are actually being deprecated at the end of the year and being, uh, being completely revamped. So as part of the new unified interface, they're here temporarily, but I wouldn't put too much stock in them uh, remaining. They should disappear right around uh, December and be completely redone. Then we have an assistant. Uh, so there's a couple additional features as part of unified interface. You get to use uh, more of an assistant. It's consider this to be an AI bot that can be configured to help you uh, make some uh, additional decisions uh, as how, how you want to walk through some some things with your with your uh, end users. Uh, we still have uh, your uh, quick create in your advanced find. And another new area is kind of a connected share area. Uh, this gets you directly into like the Dynamics 365 community uh, and lets you have kind of a, a quick way into like different blog options. So I can go ahead and click on this and show you. And right here, you're now into the Dynamics community. Uh, you get additional, you know, access to blogs and any kind of questions uh, that are out in the forums right here. So right from your browser, you can go directly into that. And again, you're still, you still have your personal, uh, personal settings, et cetera, 
And then uh, we also have a, a help tab, which can be configured to uh, bring users uh, specifically to your own um, your, your your own help and uh, any kind of like training materials you have. We don't have that currently set up, so it just goes to the default one uh, for Microsoft, but you can uh, customize that and uh, have it sent to your your own internal company um, training area. So a couple other things that we uh, that we can look for is I'm gonna show you how to kind of go through those two upgrade paths we went through. Uh, I'm gonna start with the option one, which is a simple going into your uh, your org and basically setting and saying, I just only want to see unified interface for this. So from, from there, that's located in what's now known as the Power Platform Admin Center. And from the Admin Center, um, so here's where you, where you basically begin and you come into your admin center and you select which environments you're in. Um, I only on my demo have a production, but you'll want to do this in your uh, user acceptance testing or your sandbox. Um, so when you come in, Basically check it and click on settings. And from settings, we're gonna look at what uh, at the product area and then go into behavior. So we click on behavior and then there's just one, one little uh, area here that we click on that says use interfa yeah, unified interface only. And when you click on that and click save, now you're basically saying this uh, this environment, all you want to do is see unified interface. Now again, this is just uh, specifically for you kind of kicking the tire, so to speak, and seeing what it looks like without having to do too much heavy customization and configuration right away. So if I go back to my, here's my legacy app, and I'm, all I'm going to do is just click refresh on my screen. And you can see it, it ch basically changed everything over to the unified interface app. And you also get a nice little warning at the top that this legacy app uh, may have features or customizations that aren't supported in Unified Interface. So this is where uh, a very quick way for you to go through, take a couple uh, looks at what what, are, what has changed and then kind of doing a side by side. So that's one way to kind of look at what, what, you're, what you're basically in for and what things that you might have to change. So you'll come in here and look at different account forms that you have uh, and seeing how the forms themselves have changed. So this is kind of what the new forms look like. Now, if I go back and turn turn this back off, because I want to go through the second side, and then I come back in here and I, I refresh my screen, and then I have to come back to the legacy app. And now we're back back into the, the legacy app for now. Okay, so the second way that we can, so basically our option two, in order to uh, create a uh, a new app uh, is we come into power apps so this this section has basically taken over where in the old section so you have your old legacy app where you go into settings and you have this customizations and solutions area right here it's now taken over by uh, power apps so from power apps we go ahead and basically we're going to create a solution and in this solution, we're going to put our app. So when we configure everything into our UNT, our UAT or uh, test environment, so your sandbox area, we can make the adjustments to our unified interface app. Uh, so when we go to push it into production, that it's we it, it it updates everything automatically for you. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's uh, type in unified interface. Okay, I'm going to use my default publisher. Where's mine? There we are. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. So what I'm doing here is the solution unique name. Oh, I think it's already made. Let's try it again. UUI. There we go. And there's our new solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the solution. And from the solution, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new app. So I'm gonna take our app, I'm gonna create a model-driven app. So this is our new unified interface app. And you can name it pretty much whatever you want. Uh, generally, your uh, whatever your currently named uh, application is for the legacy web client, um, I would say just 
basically take that as you know you, whatever your former name was and literally just add UI to it at the end, just so you as, you, as your developer can uh, understand the difference between both. I'm also going to click down on here where it says I'm going to use an existing solution to create the app. And what we're going to end up doing here after I click next is we're going to select the uh, solution that we're going to uh, pull by. And we're going to go ahead and grab your default solution. So this should have all the customizations and configurations that are in your system currently. Um, and we're going to go ahead and create an app out of that. Now, the next thing it asks for is a sitemap. This is one of the few cool things that Microsoft has. The sitemap is literally called sitemap. Now, if you've created your own custom sitemap, you will have to select it for that for this for this application. But for most of us, the default solution plus the the sitemap should be just fine. So when I go ahead and hit done on this, it's going to create that solution in the background and create that app. Once the app is created, it's then going to add this application and then bring us directly into the app designer. So this may look familiar, it may not look familiar. Um, if you have any questions or concerns for throughout anything as part of this uh, webinar, by all means, reach out to us. Uh, at the end of this webinar, I will have our, uh, our contact information for you. So from here, uh, this is where you go and uh, start creating any kind of changes uh, or updates that you have to do while you're looking uh, and going back and forth between like your legacy app and your regular app to be like, okay, so I need to make changes to this form. You can go ahead and come into the app designer, click on the forms, and then make your changes directly in here. So if you wanted to change like your account form, you just have to come in, click on the, uh, the little edit pen here, and now you go into Power Apps and you can start configuring uh, any kind of form changes that you that you want to change or that you need to change based on spacing requirements or how, how you have it currently set up. So I would recommend that anybody that's not familiar with this, uh, the Power Power Apps area, uh, please become uh, familiar with it and start using this more often. Uh, Again, like I said, this is for all practical purposes, taking the place of this settings area where you used to go into the customizations from here. So, you know, before we'd go into like, like our customize our, uh, our solution and everything was kind of right here, right at our fingertips. So for the, for the most part, it is now here. So, and it even tells you this operation is now handled in Power Apps. <laughs> so when you come in at the first time, um, it, it will warn you and say, hey, you can do it there. Now, if you click OK, it brings you right into Power Apps. If you click Cancel, you can stay in your uh, in your you know legacy area. Um, again, the reason why I'm saying that you should get familiar with this, uh, this new area to do your, any customizations, is this will be deprecated at some point. They haven't told us when it's going to be deprecated. But uh, I would say that in, in the near future, it will be. So start becoming more comfortable uh, with the, the Power Apps platform. Okay, so I'm gonna go into a, a demo of the system now and kind of walk you through what the, what the new things are in, uh, in, in CRM. So with this new unified uh, interface uh, and some of the different features we went over, so we've already seen how the left-hand navigation works. Um, and it's basically just taking the, uh, the top the top navigation that we had and kind of transposing it on the left hand side. Uh, you still have the kind of breadcrumbs area that you have up here. You still have your waffle menu. This is where your Office 365 is and you can go into your Office 365 apps from here. Uh, these are the different uh, basically applications that you have access to. So there's our uh, you know a sales team member. Here's our old legacy client um, and then I think currently right now we are into that uh, the unified interface one. So From here, uh, we can look at uh, the different areas that we have in uh, in CRM. So I wanted to show you the screen adaptation. So if I look, let's go ahead and jump into a record quick. So let's take our InfoStrat account record. And this is what it looks like in the new area, but I'm gonna go backwards. So let's go into our old, our old area so you can see what it did previously uh, and how the screen adapted uh, back then versus what it's gonna look like now. So once this loads, if I take this screen out and I start adjusting adjusting the uh, resolution. So see how I'm starting to close it? And it's just basically just shrinking everything together, right? So in the new system, what it looks like when I do this, and again, we'll pull this down. There we go. And as we start moving, 
it starts adjusting. You can start seeing how, how it's being responsive. Oh, we lost a column. And what it did there is it just tucked the column in down, down below. So as we start going further and further in, it starts adjusting. You can see it's starting to put, it changes the field names. Uh, they're now on top, the field labels, instead of being, uh, being on the side and kind of scrunching together. And now we get down to just one column. And then we have a scroll, scroll bar for the rest of the, the different sections that we have on our forms. So it's become a more adaptive design for you. Another thing that's, uh, that's on here uh, is you have your collapsible sitemap. So if you need more real estate on your screen, you can just come up to this left-hand uh, section here and click on sitemap. And your sitemap goes away and gives you a little bit more of uh, a real estate you know, to deal with, uh, to work with. Another thing that you'll notice is that our tabs that used to, uh, are now across the top. Now the tabs used to be right here where you'd have to come through and then you could scroll up and down to get to them. And if you had a form, and if any of you use an, our GovCon or GovWin solution, your form is quite big. So you would have a, a lot of scrolling to do to get to different places, or you could have used this little hamburger menu here if you wanted to get to like the scheduling area. You click on that and it brings you right to the scheduling area. So with the new unified interface, now they're across the top. So now uh, instead of having to scroll through, you see all I have is just one tab, and then I can go into my next tab, and it's very, very quick and responsive. Additionally from here, uh, we also have your headers. So your header itself now, uh, in the old, si old style, you know, it was kind of very blocky, took up, you could see this had the little lines, so it wasn't very responsive. Um, within the new area, uh, this kind of expands and is as it needs to, um, and everything at top is a, a read-only field. If you ever need to adjust some of these uh, items up higher here, we have this little down caret area uh, that does provide you an area so that you can change things. So if I want to change, say, the, our number of employees to 80, and our annual revenue, let's just say that we were at 7 million. And as soon as I select away, it updates on top. Same, same areas we still have save in different areas. Um, the next thing that we have uh, within within CRM is there's a couple different views that have changed within the uh, the unified interface. So you'll notice now that we have basically filtering at every at every column. So that's become a little bit more uh, almost kind of simulating the the advanced find with having different these different um, filtering capabilities. Another thing that we have is if I select an account from a view, so if I'm going to look at our InfoStrack uh, account from this view, when I go ahead and open it up, I have this little uh, item up here at the top that allows me to see additional records that are in that view. So if you have a specific personal view to yourself, that's just like the, these are the three accounts that I work with, and you open up a, a record from there, uh, you don't have to go back to, he, uh, back to the account section, select your view. You can just go directly from here. So with that, with this little new new area that they they added here. An additional item that we have is your recent and pinned are now on the left. So if anything that I want to, and I'm going to unpin some of these things. So if I only work with like the Infostrat account and uh, and I want to you know pin pin that account, I basically go into my my recents and there's my Infostrat account. And all I have to do is click on this little pin area with this little pin button, so it's at a 45 degree angle. If I come down to my pinned there's my info strat. Now, if I also spend a lot of time in the uh, account, uh, the accounts I follow. So if I have a, a a view of just the accounts that I follow and I want that as well, you'll see that in this recent, I have views and I have accounts. So if I want to pin that that accounts I follow, I can also pin that there, and then from here it'll show up. So this is good for your end users if they're use, doing very specific things with uh, just a, a small uh, subsection of your data. They can pin the most important items to themselves. And if at any point they're like, okay, I'm done with uh, with InfoStrat, we are like, say this was an opportunity and the InfoStrat opportunity has been closed, now I can unpin it. And at any point if I decide, oh, nope, I need it back, I can just go and pin it. So different ways to pin and unpin from there. Uh, some additional items that came in with the uh, unified interface was the what, the theory of uh, of a reference panel. So again, previously in uh, in CRM, there used to be. Let's go to our reference panel here. 
So when you end up wanted to add subgrids, they just stack subgrid on top of subgrid, right? So in this reference panel, I have my, my account uh, active contacts and then some opportunities here. And the, all the data for each was uh, always available, but it, you could make your, you know, your foam, form be somewhat long. So in the new area, they have what's called a reference panel. And the reference panel itself will allow you to basically stack uh, subgrids on top of each other and be able to control what you see. So right here, here's my, my active account subgrid. And then off to the right here, I have uh, where here's my contacts, and then here is like opportunities. So two different subgrids just stacked on top of each other. And I can uh, configure this so that uh, I, I can show them basically on top of each other back and forth to save up some of your uh, real estate, your screen space. Now with this uh, on the reference panel, you can only have one reference panel per form. So as part of your you know, design and build, just make sure that uh, you, you can only have one of these, but it, it does save a lot of space. Uh, instead of creating tab after tab after tab, you can create one tab that can hold multiple subgrids in it. So the next thing that's changed uh, in CRM is the, oops, pardon me, the business process flow. So if I go back into an opportunity and I have my demo one opportunity, you can see at the very top, our business process flow took up a lot of screen space. Like see how we were like a, you know, a third of our screen is taken up by this business process flow. Now in the, uh, in the new system, when we go into opportunities, our business process flow has changed a little bit. It's now a little bit skinnier at the top. Um, you still have fields and uh, items that you can add to it, but they're kind of behind these targets. So now you get uh, you can start seeing how how these can you know be utilized and how they can you know still keep your uh, your screen space available to you. Now let's see as you can see they're they're opening up, but it's also blocking some some data in the background. And if that becomes too much for you and you want to be able to be able to read some of the items that are on your form, not just that are in uh, your business process flow area, you can just pin this. So if we pin this stage flyout, it shows up on the right. So now I get all of my screen space here. I can fill out and do whatever steps that I need to do on, on my right side. And then once I'm done do, uh, filling out these fields, all I have to do is just click that. And now it goes back to a, a normal screen as it was before. So the next thing I want to get into uh, is a, a couple of these new fun, uh, like data functionalities that we have. So different like inputs and uh, custom controls. So we have sliders and star switches and flip switches. And, uh, the most important thing that I like is the input mask. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my little customs control area. And you can see that I've already kind of preset some of this up. So we have flip switches and you can see how these would work better in like your tablets and your phone. Um, we have star ratings now, and these are just fields. I don't have any code um, on this form whatsoever. Where we used to have, if you wanted to do something like this, it's like, okay, well, with JavaScript into our plugin, we can create it. Now, a lot of these things are right out of the box. So I can select my stars there. We have arc knobs where it allows you to do like a half circle and you can drag drag through. Same thing for like a full radial knob, you get the, the full circle. Um, and if some of these, uh, if they're updated by uh, workflow, they can, we can just add uh, just numbers correctly in here. So if I wanted to put 40,000 in here, I could put 40,000 if I wanted to put 400,000 in and the, the, the data visualization will show it. Same thing that we have here with the lineal bar. Again, you can set your maximums and minimums. And then we also have an area where you can do number inputs where you can, you know, from like your phone, you can say, oh, I want to do 10 and a half or 11 and a half, et cetera. And if you decide, oh, I really want 15, you can just type it in as well. So different areas for that. We also have uh, option sets. So this this functionality works uh, when you have two values or three values. If it's over uh, three values, it does not work very well. It'll only show you the first three. But if you uh, have something like you know uh, options of like submitted, not submitted, or like you know your if you have a gender one where it's you know male, female, non-binary, etc. So these these are different areas instead of like having to go through your normal uh, subgrid and then selecting you know your, from your list and selecting it that way. This is just a new data visualization this way. We also have what's called a pen input, and you'll have to we'll have to see how I'm doing today with how how to draw. So generally, if you have this on a tablet, you just use someone's finger and they can draw their their like their signature, etc. Um, but if I'm using like my mouse, yeah, we'll see how I do. Not too bad. It looks like chicken scratch, but here we go. So that's kind of my name. 
<laughs> and then all you have to do is click the save button right there. Um, the input mask. So if you ever have an area in Serum where you want to just like, you know, your states, state codes, and so we want like, you know, MN for Minnesota, or, you know, uh, and you always wanted to show up in caps so that your data is consistent. Uh, if I type in, now this, I'm doing it in this all caps area because in the background I've typed in uh, areas or basically forcing that only caps are gonna show up in here. And the same thing, you can do it in like a lowercase uh, and I type in, and even if I'm trying to take like uh, a capital letter, it does force uh, a lowercase in there. And this can be configured for however long you want it. I set it just to two, just uh, like two characters just for, for this demonstration. The next thing is all of these wonderful data masks here. So again, this used to look like JavaScript. If you wanted uh, your standard US phone to be set up like this, I had to use JavaScript for it. So now uh, we have data, uh, what, what's called an input mask in the background, and I can put my, my phone number in here and it sta saves that input mask. So it's kind of shows you uh, how, how, the, how this is gonna look data-wise for your users. So they don't have to type in the brackets and the dash, it, the system does it for them. And the same thing with international numbers. So if you have international numbers and you need it uh, put in a specific spacing, um, we put the input mask in and then that it does everything there for you. Additionally, we have autocompletes. So the autocomplete now, uh, these two fields right now, uh, an autocomplete can be set against um, like a, a view. And this that's what this one is. It's set against a view and I put a specific uh, field against that view and I'm using um, the uh, account name uh, as here. So if I started, uh, you can see if we uh, just click on, or if we start typing something in, so let's do datum. And it's filtering, so it's almost like an option set, but not really. It's a, a more uh, robust uh, way of being able to pull data. Uh, and it does it uh, uh, almost like we would have something where you previously had to have the asterisks in front. That's what type of search this is. It's an any search. It does, it's a contained search instead of a starts with search. Um, I, and it, we can do it pretty much from almost anything. So if I'm typing in winery, there's our Coho winery. Um, and it's really filtering solely on uh, on this account list, and it's on an account name for all my active accounts. And that's just what I set it at. Um, if we wanna go back to our recent record we were just at. And additionally, we have on here where it can go towards an option set. So I have this one set towards a, uh, an option set just for US states, uh, just to show you, you can start typing in, and then yeah, we'll take Washington. Or if we wanted like, you know, Rhode Island, et cetera. So that's some of the, the newer things that are uh, in CRM. Um, the, the additional items that we have um, is, is there's also some things from the, uh, the opportunity screen. So our opportunity screen itself, we now have access to do one thing we haven't ever had access to change before. Uh, so if we your closed loss or closed one screen, we can now change this. We cannot add any new additional uh, uh, relationships to whatever the, the closed opportunity uh, is already related to, but we can now add different fields uh, on this uh, and and take data from, from these fields and push it back into, into CRM. Before, we really couldn't touch this screen, but we now have access to that one as well. Um, the other thing I want to get into in our, in our last couple minutes before we open up a Q&A section is our timeline. So the timeline is has been around for a little bit, but it's also added added some more functionality to it. So you'll see from this screen, um, I have my timeline set up, and uh, what this does is it shows me different uh, auto auto posts that are happening. So you'll see these two auto posts, and those are just things that are happening into this record. Um, so you can see here, uh, I created the account yesterday, uh, or yeah, a couple of days ago actually, and then I also created a, an opportunity. So you can see opportunity created by me. Uh, and then it gives you a date timestamp over here. So additionally on here, it uh, gives me my tasks, any phone calls that I had here, uh, any appointments that were uh, 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 related to this, uh, this account, as well as any notes that I've added. Uh, so all of this is very important and very nice to have at, at your end user's fingertips. Um, we can still add any kind of activity directly from here. So if I wanted to add a quick phone call, I'd, all I have to do is click on that plus button there, 
click add phone call brings us up to a quick create so i can say had a call with julie and then put my description down in my notes from it so the call with julie went well helps if i can spell right and then you can go ahead and save and close that right from here. So very, very easy way to take notes uh, within, within accounts or contacts or wherever else you have the timeline put in. Um, this can be configured against almost every single entity in the system. Um, now, another thing that it has is uh, filtering capabilities. And these are really new and really kind of cool. So a lot of times if you wanted to search data, you would always have to go up to this advanced find query uh, generator and kind of grab from there. But at this point, we can now bring some of these things into CRM uh, or, or into this timeline. Now, and then you get your different filtering by here. So in this the timeline right now, I have one note, I have two posts and six activities. And then the activity types I can look at and filter kind of like this drill down area. And I can go, oh, I only want to see phone calls. So if I wanted to click the phone calls, there we go. Now I see my phone calls. Then you can see what your statuses are, modified dates are, so anything that was in the last 30 days, last last uh, 24 hours. Uh, for the most part, these aren't too configurable, uh, but it does give you uh, some uh, better options uh, at your fingertips, fingertips than you've ever had before. Alrighty, so I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open up and kind of unmute everybody. <laughs> and then let and we can go ahead and uh get ready to start for our um let's switch this and get into more of our question and answer session so kind of like in review for me um so we have a unified inter uh, interface upgrade plan um you have your initiate phase so you know have the right conversations with the right people to find out exactly what it is that it's going to take to uh get you updated uh, and upgraded onto the uh, unified interface um as part of that uh discussion you'll get into an explore phase so where and when do i start um uh, when as soon as possible so uh, we're here to help you with that uh, and walk you through any of the, the issues or uh, or designs that you'll need to need to go through and then you make that transition so you basically go uh, into the unified interface and you have that uh, that pushed into your production environment and then you optimize so this is also an, an, an area where you can uh, start taking some of the things that used to be out of the box or sorry the other way around that used to take code like whether it's a javascript or a plugin in order to bring some some functionality into the system there's a lot of things now that uh that that can be done strictly out of the box with the unified interface so you know with your input mask I, almost every client i've ever worked with has something for phone numbers like i want it to look like this all the time and that used to be a javascript where now we have an, uh, an input mask and we can remove that javascript from your from your form so that we don't have to you don't have to worry about that when it come upgrade time so uh, with this, there's some helpful resources. There's a unified interface community. Um, and here, uh, some of the links that are that are part of that community are on here. Um, you have a unified interface playbook. There's a white paper for this uh, as well that uh, gives you some information about, you know, where unified interface is going, uh, what the expectations were, like what are, their, what are their goals with the unified interface. Uh, there's a couple quick start guides here as well. So you can add it to an existing environment or set uni uh, unified interface as default. So we went over both of those just kind of quickly uh, as the at the very beginning of this uh, this webinar, um, and then we also have an introduction. This is a nice video that kind of uh, walks you through pretty much what I did um, with a little bit bell, more bells and whistles. Then you have a transition checklist. This is very very nice to have, and then blogs. So if you go into the uh, the unified interface uh, area, it gives you some blogs that you can go to because people are going through the same thing that you are right now. So not a bad idea to, to look at some of these resources. And again, I'll, I'll be providing uh, the notes uh, and the, the, the PowerPoint to this uh, after, the, uh, after the webinar is over. We'll get to have Julie send that out to everybody. Okay, so thank you. Uh, we'll get into the, um, the question and answer section, session here in a second. Um, if you have any other questions, by, by all means, reach out to uh, sales at infostrat.com and we'll get you in contact with uh, some of our, our uh, consultants that'll be able to walk you through uh, how to go through some of these unified interface areas and uh, this upgrade that's gonna be, uh, that's coming up in, uh, in December.